So back in chapter 10, we talked about isomers, and we defined an isomer as uh, two chemicals that had the exact same chemical formula, but their structure was different. We talked about constitutional isomers in chapter 10 uh, that talked about how atoms were um, in those isomers were arranged in a different way. Well, in chapter 11, we're going to look at a different type of isomer. These ones are called stereoisomers. Right, so stereoisomers are a class of isomer that has everything to do with what we refer to as stereochemistry. And what that really refers to as how do these uh, molecules appear in three-dimensional space? This has a lot to do with like kind of geometry and kind of picturing shapes as um, and how things can rotate around particular bonds. And the key here in terms of understanding this is to understand that Whenever you have a double bond, like between two carbons, you have a restricted rotation. So if you remember um, back earlier in the semester, whenever we looked at the Vesper theorem, we looked at all the different shapes and on the screen, there were molecules that were kind of like twisting around in different ways. Well, that's free rotation. In this case, you have restricted rotation where things do not move around all however they want. So you have restricted rotation around the double bond. And what that does is it creates two different possible arrangements of the atoms in many situations. So looking at 2-butene here. So 2-butene, CH3, CH, double bonded to CH, CH3, has two different possible arrangements. So on the left down here on the bottom, this is called the cis isomer. So the cis isomer refers to this structure that has both CH groups on the exact same side of the carbons. So in other words, the one CH3 group points up, the other CH3 group points up around the double bond. Whereas on the one on the right over here, you have the two groups on opposite sides of each other. You have one CH3 pointing up and you have the other CH3 three pointing down. In that case, we have what's called the trans isomer. And the one thing to keep in mind here is we're always looking at where the carbon containing group on that double bond goes to. So in other words, we have the carbon carbon double bond in the middle, right? And each carbon here has a CH3 and one of them has an H. We don't worry too much about the H's. We look at how the carbon containing substituents are in relation to each other. So if they're both on the same side, the both CH3s are on the same side, it's the cis isomer. And if the, the CH3 groups or the carbon containing substituents are on opposite sides, that's the trans isomer. Um, this shows the exact same thing we just looked at, just shows the ball and stick model. And you can see how different they look in three dimensional space. So if you're wondering why these are these stereoisomers are treated as different chemicals. This shows why, right? Cis-2-butene and trans-2-butene, if I were showing you those without the names there, you would say those definitely look like two different molecules. And since there's no free rotation around that the, that carbon-carbon bond there, this can't move down there on its own will. So it's kind of trapped in that upper location. So again, and same thing with the CH3 group that's on the other side, they're trapped in there. So those two CH3 groups will always be right next to each other on the same side, that's the cis configuration, and then the trans configuration is when they're on the opposite sides. So how do you know whether or not a, uh, a chemical will have stereoisomers? Because not all of them do. So you're looking for a couple of different things. First, you look for the carbon-carbon double bond, right? You look for that double bond. Once you have that double bond, you use it then your next question should be, okay, on the first carbon of the double bond, there's two other things attached to it besides the carbon, because carbons are always going to have their four bonds. Are A and B different from each other? Are there two other things attached to that carbon different from each other? If so, then you go to the other side and you say, okay, on the other side, that carbon has two bonds to the other carbon, are C and D different from each other? If that's the case, then you're looking at something that has stereoisomers. But if A and B are the same, or if C and D are the same, 
then you don't have isomers because the idea here is if you change A and B and you change their locations, that should give you a different molecule. But if, if A is an H, if A is a hydrogen and B is a hydrogen, you can flip-flop those two things and there's no difference between them. And that's why those groups have to be different. Okay, so those groups have to be different from each other. Um, and that's the example here. So in this one butene, right, those H's are identical groups. So no cis and trans isomers are possible. So the only difference between these two structures here is that the CH2, CH2, CH3 is down on the one on the left and it's up on the one on the right. But you could imagine taking that whole entire molecule and kind of flipping it horizontally and nothing changes because it's still CH2, CH3 is going to be in relation to an H there and it's in relation to an H there. Right, so you're really looking to what is it next to? And in both cases, it's next to an H, so those are treated as identical molecules. All right, so kind of looking at this in kind of a bigger picture, you have stereoisomers, which are what we're talking about now. And don't forget, we also have constitutional isomers. So you have to be able to distinguish between them. In some cases, you're actually going to have two molecules that are absolutely identical, like we just looked at on the previous slide, that look like they're isomers, but they're really not. So you should be able to look at two molecules and decide whether they're identical, constitutional isomers, or stereoisomers. All right, so again, stereoisomers differ in their 3D arrangement of atoms. So if we were to compare cis-2-butene to trans-2-butene, which are stereoisomers of each other, both of them read CH3, CH, CH, CH3, right? And again, CH3, CH, CH, CH3. You can see how I can read those the same going in either direction. So those are not constitutional isomers because they're not bonded differently. Whereas if we looked at one butene and comparing one butene to those two, and we say, okay, we, over here we start with a CH2. And then we have a CH, and then we have a CH2, and then we have a CH3. There were no CH2s whenever we looked at cis-2-butene and trans-2-butene. So in that sense, that's how we come across constitutional isomers when we say they're different in how they're bonded to each other. All right. So on this particular slide, uh, one butene is a constitutional isomer with both of the cis-2-butene and trans-2-butene. Whereas the cis and trans to butene are stereoisomers of each 